have what we think is an understanding of what blessed is. And for most of us, blessed means we've got more stuff. We've got more money. We've got better relationships. We're healthy in our bodies. We've got the good things of this life. Some people would even say you're living the good life. I got all the money that I need. I've got I'm everything that I could ever possibly want. I'm living the good life. I'm living the party life. I've got everything. Hey, I've got friends. I've got, I'm having a good time. I'm living the good life. But Jesus comes and said, I want to show you the different meaning of what the word blessed is. The Greek word for blessed is the word makarios. And Makarios is translated fortunate, happy, flourishing, or blessed. But what you have to understand is this. Jesus didn't preach in Greek. We have from the Greek Septuagint uh, the, these translations. But the Greek Septuagint took what was given uh, uh, as Jesus would speak in Aramaic. They would use Hebrew as the religious uh, communication and the way that they studied scripture was Hebrew, but they spoke Aramaic. And so Jesus is speaking Aramaic. And what theologians believe is that Jesus did not use the familiar word that is often found in scripture of what we often refer to as blessed, which is the Hebrew word Baruch. Which Baruch means, uh, what we typically think Baruch means, or, or blessed means, uh, having all the stuff. We've got abundance. We've got all of this. Uh, but that's not what Jesus said. Jesus didn't say, Baruch are you. Baruch are those who, and then lay it out. Jesus used a different word. He used the, the Aramaic word ashray. Everybody say ashray. Ashray, simply translated, goes beyond just meaning having all the good stuff and having all the blessings. Ashray literally means experiencing the good life. There's a couple places in the Old Testament where Ashray is used. Psalms 1 and 1 says, blessed is the man. Ashray is the man who walketh, come on. Who walketh not in the way of sinners, nor standeth in the sea, or sitteth in the sea of the scornful, nor standeth in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Jesus, uh, or the word of God tells us in the book of Psalms, uh, that's what blessing looks like, uh, is you're like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Doesn't matter what season you're in, there's flourishing in that. Jesus said in, or, 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 uh, in, in, in Scripture, Psalms chapter 2, Ashray, all are, are to those who take refuge in this king. He brings stability. He brings security. He brings safety. He brings strength. One of my favorite places uh, where Ashray is used to help us to understand this concept, the Bible says that the queen of Sheba comes to Solomon's temple that he had just built, his, 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 his uh, home and, and the temple, and she comes to observe all of the things uh, she had heard heard of the splendor and the glory of all that Solomon had done, all the gold and all the marble and all the ivory and everything that went along with this, with, with what was in his kingdom. But when the queen of Sheba came, here's what she said to Solomon. She said, I'm not, I'm not enamored by the gold. I'm not enamored by the marble and all of the trimmings that are in your, he, here's what she said. She said, Ashray are thy servants and Ashray are these thy people who stand in your presence continually. Come on, somebody. Blessing is more than stuff. <laughs> Hear me. Blessing is more than stuff. It's more than money. It's more than relationships. It's more than uh, 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 it's more than accomplishment. Uh, it's more than security. Come on. It is being in a state uh, of relationship with God. We may have all hell breaking loose in our life, uh, but I can still stand and say, I am blessed. I come against the lie from the pit of hell that the only outlet for blessing is materialism and stuff and things take this whole world but give me Jesus take
take my money. Take my possessions. Take my health. Take whatever you got to take. But as long as I've got Jesus, I can stand and declare, I am blessed. Above all else, I am blessed. I got to hurry. So here's what happened. The queen of Sheba comes, and she didn't bless the servants of Solomon. She, she, she didn't put blessing on them. She observed about them that they were blessed. That's what Jesus is doing when he starts Matthew chapter 5 of preaching the Sermon on the Mount. He's not pronouncing blessing on the, on the groups of people that he's about to identify here in these nine verses but what he is doing is Jesus is making the observation that in the kingdom the blessed people it looks a little bit different than what the world thinks come on somebody he, he, he's telling it, it's not going it, it's not going to look like who you think is blessed Get in your mind of who you think is the most blessed. Bill Gates, uh, Elon Musk, some athlete, LeBron James, whatever it is. That's what blessed looks like. But ladies and gentlemen, when you're in covenant relationship, blessing looks just a little bit different. And Jesus, listen to me. Jesus wanted us to, I think this is such critical teaching in the hour that we're living in right now. Because we've got so many people that get, hear me somebody, that get frustrated in their relationship with God. Because they don't have all the things. And they think somehow God is, is, is not treating them fairly. Somehow God is withholding from them some things that belong to them. And Jesus is coming along and saying, your blessing is not tied to what you possess. <laughs> blessing is not about abundance. Blessing is about his kingdom. And Jesus says, these are the ashray. These are the ones who are possessing the good life. Everybody say the good life. These are the ones that are possessing the good life. And then Jesus says, so Jesus is identifying these are the people that are blessed. And then Jesus pronounces the blessing on what is about to come to those who are living the, the good life. Come on, somebody. Here's what Jesus is trying to do. Jesus is trying to alter and change their perspective. The earth up perspective says that blessing is all the things, all the stuff. Earth up is I've got to, I've got to achieve. I've got to accomplish. I've got to gather. I've got to get more stuff. I've got to have. That's the earth up perspective. And Jesus comes along. Oh, come on, somebody. And Jesus comes along and says, I'm not here to give you the, the, the message of the, the, the earth up perspective. Jesus said, I'm here to give you the heaven down perspective this is what it looks like from the heaven down perspective and I'm challenging the way you think I've come to confront some false beliefs that have crept into our theology and I'm challenging us today just like Jesus did to get into our thinking, not the earth up perspective of blessing, but to get the heaven down perspective of what blessing looks like. So Jesus starts, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move through these fairly quickly. I wish I had time. I wish I had time to really dig into all of them because there's so much power and there's so much truth in each and every one of these. Jesus says this. Jesus says, the good life. Everybody say the good life. You know, when Jesus started out and said, blessed are those, you know, the people were like, oh yeah, it's about to happen. He's about to pronounce some blessing on us. This is going to be amazing. And here's what Jesus said. Jesus shocks them all. Jesus, Jesus, they're thinking, he's going to say, blessed are those who have great possessions. Blessed are those who have all the things. And Jesus starts out, he starts out the, the message of the kingdom by saying this, the good life belongs to the powerless. Jesus is walking by 
and he's observing people that have no power. The, 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 the King James, New King James says poor in spirit. It literally means uh, those who are without power, those who are powerless, right? And Jesus is looking people that have no power. They don't, they don't have, they don't control their own destiny. They don't control a lot of things about their own life. It looks like others are in charge. And Jesus, hear me somebody. Jesus said the good life belongs to the powerless. Come on somebody. He's challenging their way of thinking. When you feel like there's nothing else you can do. That's when you're living the good life. We do everything we, in, our, in our power to remove discomfort, to remove anything that causes conflict or change in our lives. We do everything we can to remove it. And Jesus said, don't you do that because it's the blessed life. It's the good life when you're powerless. Why? He said, because there's coming a day where the powerless are gonna receive the kingdom of God. There are people that are withholding the kingdom of God and they're trying to keep their control on it. And Jesus said, when you feel powerless, you need to rejoice because you're experiencing the good life because on the other side, you're gonna experience the kingdom of God. Jesus says, the good life belongs to those who grieve. You know somebody was in that place. Looking at Jesus like, Jesus, what you talking about? What you talking about? The good life belongs to those who grieve. Why? Because there's coming a day. Here's what Jesus wanted them to know. When the key, listen to me. When the kingdom of heaven comes, the powerless, you're going to experience the kingdom of heaven. When the kingdom of heaven comes to those who are grieving right now, you're going through hardship, difficulty. You're, you have so many tears that you're crying. You can't even hardly contain it. And Jesus said, the good life belongs to you because there's coming a day when your joy is going to be fulfilled and your grieving will come to an end. Jesus says, the good life belongs to the unimportant. The powerless, the grieving, and the unimportant or the meek. Why? Because, because the meek, the, the, the unimportant, a lot of their status was derived by, by land ownership and, 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 the, and, and, and how much they controlled as far as land is concerned. And here, here you have powerless people. You have unimportant people. You have grieving people. And Jesus said, when the kingdom of heaven comes, uh, the land that you don't, uh, are, is being possessed by somebody else. Uh, Jesus said, I'm going to put you in control. And you will no longer be the oppressed, but you will be the possessors. Jesus says the good life belongs to those who are perpetually hungry and thirsty for righteous living with God and with others. Why? Because if you'll, have, if you'll live righteously with each other, he says you will be filled with the righteousness of God. The good life belongs to those who treat others mercifully like you would your own family. You treat others mercifully like you would your own family. Why? If you'll do that, if you'll live this way, you will receive the mercy of God. The good life belongs to those whose internal motivations are to do right by God and right by others. The Bible calls it to be pure in heart. They are the ones who are going to see the face of God. Come on, somebody. I don't do right because it's going to help me or bless me. I do right because I want to see the face of God. I want to have purity in heart because I want to seek God's face.